This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Carl Stormer is the greatest grandfather of street photography before Henri Gautier Brasson. If you're a street photography enthusiast, you may consider Henri cartier Brasson as the godfather of this popular genre. And you would definitely will not heard of Carl Stormer. Well, at least as a photographer. Yes, Carl was born in 1874. And to many, he's a scholar, a mathematician in Norway. However, what many didn't know is that he's also a photographer. But his photographic journey is a rather eccentric one. His passion in photography was driven by his curiosity in a woman during the 1890s. Carl fell in love with a lady whom he didn't know, and with whom he was too shy to become acquainted. So he wished to have a picture of her, but without her knowing. But what he then did started what we now consider as paparazzi and street photography. And to accomplish his wishes, he bought himself a CP stone vest spy camera. And he would put the camera behind his vest and push the ticking lens through the buttonhole with a modified string release mechanism so he can control the shutter in his pants. Well, definitely sounds a little bit dodgy. But this allowed him to take photos when he walked around without anyone knowing. And because the stone camera is more like a pinhole camera, it's basically silent. And being a pinhole, it also means that his practice is restricted in sunny days too. What fascinates me though, was how he slowly changed his direction from snapping and stalking a lady that he loved to recording daily lives of people around him. And this change perhaps was driven by the results he got from his early pictures. People's reactions in most of his photographs were natural and unposed, had a huge sense of authenticity of time and space. Something that most street photographers would definitely appreciate this type of approach. An approach even the late street photography nanny, Vivian Meyer, also enjoyed. On a technical note, his photography was pretty restrictive not because of his skill, but rather the limitations on what he used. I think he's done a pretty good job in exposing each frame, given the only adjustable variable is the exposure time by how long he pulled his string in his trousers pocket. Composition is also almost impossible as the camera sat behind his vest before his chest. So he would have gone through many practices before he finally mastered the angle that he wanted for his photographs. Finally, his discipline. We're so used to shooting hundreds of frames in any given moments these days. And even Henri, who famously uses Leica M3 and M2, had the luxury of 24 or 36 exposure per roll of film. But Carl only has six frames per roll. And another thing is, negatives as we know today didn't exist during his time. And all he could use was glass plates, made specifically for his stone camera. So he had to choose his shots and subjects very carefully. Over the course of his photographic journey, aside from his main duty as a mathematician and astrophysicist, Carl made around 500 photographs from his tiny spy camera, giving you a complete scene of how Norway Street and people looked like during the Victorian era. Something that I think possessed a great value in historic terms, as there were not many known photographers or photographs of any natural street scenes back in the late 1800s. Before I continue to look at Carl's photography style and ethic, I would like to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can find tons of high quality material where you can learn new skills or further your existing knowledge. Even as a professional myself, I need to keep up with the latest trends and upgrade my skills for tomorrow's projects. If you're watching this video and find it interesting, then no doubt you will like Eugenia's camera's journey through time video on Skillshare. It's fun and has a few interesting facts and history about cameras back in the old days. If you've been following this channel, I've talked about visual styles many times, and Skillshare also has a video about it too. So whether you want to learn something in photography or even for your well-being, there's always a class in Skillshare. And because I'm so good, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 subscribers a one-month free trial instead of the normal seven days by clicking the link in my video description so you can start exploring this huge library to your heart's content and boost your creative juice. But now, it is time to continue looking at Carl Stormer's work. So, looking back at Carl's photos, you can see most of them were candid, with his subjects completely unaware of him taking photographs of them. However, you can also see most of them were smiling, and you can also almost 
feel like Carl was talking to each of his subjects at time was pulling his string for his shutter in his pants. His conduct is very common in street portraiture, which I also adopt when I am photographing strangers on London street. But with one difference, my subject sees my camera while Carl's camera was hidden. So ethically, does that make him a creepy and bad photographer? Well, to me, personally, I would be a little uncomfortable to photograph my subjects without revealing my intention. However, technically, I didn't think he did anything wrong either. He may have hid his camera under his vest, but that's no different to photographer uses a long tele lens to shoot from across the street. His way of shooting is unique and obviously, possibly down to the equipment he had. If he had access to a long lens, it would have been very different. Judging from his shy character, he would have used a long lens and actually be away from his subjects. And yet, from his later photographs, when he chatted to his subject before pulling the shutter, he's got quite comfortable in approaching strangers. At least to me, Carl's way of photographing people on the street was pioneering, unusual and intimate. The way he talked to his subjects also seemed to be comforting, if not a little creepy. But I would prefer the way he shoot than flashing the camera directly in front of the subject's face like Bruce Gilden, for instance. It's way too aggressive to my liking, but this is another topic for another day. There are, of course, many ways to capture the street. Henri had done it in a totally different manner, as he's more into visual stimulation and timing. And Carl is more like a street documentary photographer. It's more about recording characters, time and space. Whether you consider Carl Stormer as a street photographer or not, I'm very happy to have discovered him. His style and approach was very advanced of his time. While most photographers during that time were simply taking studio and formal portrait. And instead, he's gone mobile, onto the street, and record what's happening around him. And all started with love to his first subject, the lady he fancied. And with one simple spy camera with all kinds of technical limitations, and he managed to capture an era where nobody else had. And thank you for watching. And what do you think about Carl Stormer? Do you find him interesting? And let's have a chat in the comment section below. If you want to watch more content like this, remember to subscribe to stay tuned on my future videos. Peace.